Well, hey there, Grace Church. Um, Merry Christmas. Uh, yeah, I do mean that. Merry Christmas. This is a, um, a crazy season that we're in, and it's so easy to get so distracted by the um, negative headlines and all the things that are going on out there that we just forget that this is still the season of the incarnation. So it is a time for us to celebrate, a time for us to take joy, a time for us to find hope in, in the person and work of, of Jesus. And so I just want to come to you just for a moment and share a couple of my thoughts, a couple of thoughts from my heart to you um, as we then kind of enter more fully into the Christmas season over the next few days. And then as we ring in the new year, I know a, a new year that we're hoping is going to be quite different than the year that we are exiting. Um, the first thing I want to say is I want to say thank you so much for all those folks who just reached out to us, texted us, uh, emailed us, um, called us and just said, hey, we're praying for you. Is there anything we can do for you? Uh, your kindness and your love and your warmth is um, is duly noted during these days. And it's so I'm so thankful to have it. And I'm so thankful God has brought me to such an amazing church family as we have here at Grace Church. God has indeed uh, blessed us richly. All right. But I also want to tell you a quick update as far as where I am right now and where the family is. Um, I'm progressing pretty well. I got a little bit of uh, lagging congestion, uh, kind of a creepy cough occasionally. Um, I, I, don't, I still haven't had temperature, but I, I, I have on and off again taste, loss of taste and, and smell. But it, as, a, as a whole, I'm fine. I haven't had a whole lot of fatigue. Um, it's just really more or less boredom, as you can imagine, as I isolate from my family up in, up in my man cave. Um, but uh, yeah, other than that, it's been pretty, pretty, um, pretty good and pretty steady and very thankful for that um, and, and everything. As far as men and the boys are concerned, so far there's no, there's no indication that they've got any symptoms. I'm trying to keep my distance from them, come out just whenever I, I need to and, um, and, and you know, just say hey and tell them I love them and you know, just a, a brief five-minute conversation or something. But it's, it's, it's been okay and we're, we're, we're hopeful that we're going to get through this season without any more of that. I'm on day eight of the quarantine, so i got a couple more days um, and I'll have to go through Christmas Day as many of you already know that. And, uh, but as a whole, I think we're, I hope we're going to get through this pretty well. Now, um, that's the first thing I want to share with you. The second thing I want to share with you is just some thoughts I have um, and have been wrestling with over the course of the last few weeks. And it's really on the topic of disappointment, topic of disappointment. And, and, and here's what I mean. I think if anything that 2020 has done for us has shown us as humanity that we don't deal with disappointment very well. Um, that when the veil comes crashing down around us and all the things that we love and treasure so much are no longer kind of part or at least temporarily put aside and we have to deal with the disappointment of things not being, especially when you get to the holidays and, and things don't always work out the way that you want them to, um, man, we get to, we get face to face with that disappointment and it's an opportunity, a gospel opportunity. It has been for me, uh, for sure. Uh, to deal with something that I think is pervasive in humanity, and, and, and it's about like just as you know, I mean, just I want to speak to my own my own uh, challenges here. You know, like this became vividly true in my own um, experience this past this past week. It became vividly vividly clear that I don't like disappointment, especially now that I'm having to quarantine through Christmas, and not only am I going to miss out on like Christmas movie marathons with my my wife and my kids, um, and, and being able to, you know, be down here and, and enjoy Amanda baking in the kitchen, and all the things that we enjoy, the Christmas tree that we love picking out and sitting in our living room, um, those are the kind of things that I love and enjoy, and, 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 and anyone who knows me knows that's those things are like, those are huge treasures for me. And then on top of that, what's even more discouraging or disappointing is the fact that I'm, that I potentially might have disappointing children because we're having to push back Christmas Eve and Christmas Day for us. Now, here's what's wonderful about this. My boys have been amazing about this. They have been insistent that they did not want to do Christmas without me. Um, and so they're ready to push everything back a day and let's get after it um, here on the 26th. And so I'm, I'm thankful for that. Um, they are much healthier, uh, emotionally healthier men. than um, At least they're on the track to do that than I am. And I'm thankful for, thankful for that as well. Um, but, but again, what all this really reveals, okay, um, is that, um, that, that, that there's just tons of things in my life, in your life that are like pseudo masks and they, they kind of numb the reality of the world we live in instead of actually us dealing face to face with it. And so, so one of the things that I'm learning about this particular season of COVID in 2020, and I think specifically now that I've had COVID during the Christmas season, is that maybe this is actually how the world is really. That all the other stuff is really just, it's there to kind of numb us, uh, get us through, but it's kind of like a drug, right? 
Um, but in reality, the world as we know it is very much the world that you and I live in in 2020. We just sometimes live in a way that we don't know that it exists. And, and I know this about myself, and I can tend to live in, in, in kind of Narnia at times. And I've, I've had this conversation with other pastors, other church members, as well as counselees that I work with constantly. This is, this is a pervasive issue that I think we come up with constantly in, in, people's, in people's lives. And so all these things that we have in our, in our lives, they're important, they're beautiful, um, they're treasures, they're gifts, um, and they're gifts of grace. But they are, but we can't allow them to mask us to the real world that we live in. And the real world we live in, I think, is captured so beautifully in Luke 2. And it's a very short passage that many people don't put a lot of time and energy into. It talks about the prophetess Anna. Verse 36, And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of uh, Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher, and she was advanced in years, having lived with her husband seven years from when she was a virgin. And then as a widow until she was 84 years old. Now, keep on going. She did not depart from the temple, worshiping with fasting and prayer night and day. And coming up at that very hour, she began to give thanks to God and to speak of him to all, um, of him to all um, who were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. Now, what's interesting about this text is, is that it's really about a woman who just kind of embraced the disappointment of the world. She married young. She did everything right. Apparently, her husband died early, and she gave herself to the to, to the ministry uh, to the, to the to the temple. She 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 gave her entire life to to put her hope in God in the midst of that disappointment until her very old age, until she finally sees Jesus. Now, friends, that is probably more realistic to the world we live in. Um, I know that we live in a world that man we 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 can be so easily blinded to. The, the reality of the world, the reality of sin and broken destruction, that this world actually is sick, that this world actually is suffering, and then this world actually is um, sinful and broken in every way. And so, friends, I just want to kind of remind you that in, in these days, to take on the posture of, of Anna, um, who, who gave her life to put her hope in Christ and all things as she waited for him to come. Now, you and I don't wait for the first coming. We're waiting on the second coming. We don't know how long the Lord will tarry. But until then, we can enjoy all these other things that the Lord has gifted us with. But they pale in comparison to the thing, to the person that we're waiting on most, and that's Jesus. Okay? Um, I share that to you not as someone who's arrived fully at like resting in that, but as someone who's sojourning alongside you, seeking to do that. Okay? Guys, Merry Christmas. I love you, and I can't wait to be with you once again. Have a Merry Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, and, and then Happy New Year if I don't see you before then. And uh, may God's glory rest on God's people in these days.